survive. So, but hey, we're into the draft of game two. Uh, Dire Straits took game one. This is the best of five. So, whoever wins this, they'll see if Lemon Snow Cones can even it up or if Dire Straits can put them into elimination. And the bands are mostly the same. The only difference is Lemon Snow Cones opt instead of banning Slark, they ban out the Sand King. Apparently, viewing that Vision stuns and ability to rotate around the map getting things done was a problem for them to deal with. It's a, it's a good way to start it out, and having a Treant Protector is definitely the, a, a better start at this point, or it makes me feel better about their start at this point, because they needed something tanky last time, and it's still a good support that's that's tanky and offers a lot of rotation, offers a lot that they can do within the game, and it's actually one of the best duo lane picker picks that you can pick in yeah. meta right now yeah and now uh, that and the main reason he's so good is because not only is he a, like he can be a lane dominator and himself uh, like just punching people but he can help the other lane out if it needs it he doesn't have to be there he can always throw a key tree armor in a moment once he's level two or three and has that point up um but dire straits goes in with the invoker cm pick um that they ran before i guess they're just saying hey it worked before we're gonna run it right back at you it's true I don't. I don't think that that Crystal Maiden is a very good matchup versus Treant Protector. Sometimes it can work to have that CM picked up early so that you can stop out a Darkseer pick, use her Frostbite to hurt the creep. I think it's better to go around other ways and that actually have your carry deal with that problem, and then move your support into something that's kind of deal with the potential harass that a Treant. Darkseer can do, but they might not even do that combo at this point. Yeah. It's... I mean, the, I, I just don't like the CM pick with the tree, because if the tree doesn't need it in lane or can't get stuff in lane, um, the tree can just go in, punch the CM when she wants to jungle, potentially kill her, just harass her out, steal her XP, and in the late game situation, he always has his ult. He can hold his ult to cancel that. Uh, her own ult so uh, the team fight um, matchups not favorable to the cm but they pick up a tinker who is somebody invoker uh does not like to deal with in lane at all it's true i don't think that tinker has the availability though to be picked up this early in a drafting phase there's still a lot of really good heroes out there there's still, like, you could still move the Invoker to your safe lane if you wanted, pick up a Storm, or pick up a Storm for your safe lane. Really screw him over. Clockwork's also crazy good versus him. I have no idea why Dire Straits just banned out that hero. I would 100% pick that up on their second phase uh, as a support in this lineup, especially whenever a Treant is picked up. You want to pick up that clock to be able to guarantee a tanky support that can kind of one one not one v one the treant, but put some type of pressure out on lanes, especially into the rotation type lineup. It's he's also incredible with CM because he has a lot of mana cost that he wants to be spamming constantly, and that's what CM is very strong with. So, yeah. an interesting band to come out for sure. Well, I mean, the thing I'll say is. That makes me think they're trying to they pick up somebody that they don't want to see a clockwork on. They already have their offlaner in mind. I'm wondering if they want the Earthshaker, um, is my instant thought. Uh, clockwork is someone who makes Earthshaker's life pretty miserable. Um, and I'm trying to think of other offlaners that maybe they want a Centaur. Uh, Cogs is a pretty bad thing to have, like having to deal with um, that. I'm trying to think of who else. It, I mean, there's a lot of potential. Drow Tinker is not something I think happens. Like, that just seems pretty bad, so... If they uh, did pick up a Clockwork, though, here right now, Faf, they could have the opportunity to move the... To, they can't move the Clockwork to a support, because it's, Treant has to be the other support. So, you know that he's in the offline, and there's definitely heroes that you could pick up at this point to stop out a Clock. Whereas... You can't really do that. Like, I mean, Earthshaker, okay, you ban him out, and then you have Earthshaker. They just ran Clink, Shadow Shaman, uh, offlane. I'm like, man, who are you going to tell them they can't run a clock support with a tree support? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that's true. That's true. <laughs> but it I mean, wasn't Mr. as Blue, successful. I'll say the same thing to you. Like, he, he's complaining about why in God name is Tinker the first face pick. Why is Invoker a first overall pick? Like, 
Direwolf played a good invoker, but he wasn't exactly a mid one on it. Like, you know, he wasn't just styling on fools. He just he did his job right. I do like sure. the Night Stalker pick, though. Um, he's really good at pressuring Tinker, also provides long silence. And once you have the Ags, he can provide that flying vision that's needed to counter out the Tinker. Um, so that's good. And, and he is a hero that benefits from CM Mora. So they ban it's... out the AM and the Sniper. Why the Sniper? They already picked an Invoker. Weird. It's a strong pickup to have that that Night Stalker, but honestly, I think I would have loved to have seen a Spirit Breaker at this point. He could have charged down the Tinker, stunned him out, kept him locked down. You could also have the 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 Treant Protector. You can charge him before he goes invisible. He, he's a perfect uh, p- person to have dust on. A lot of opportunity there. And so, I've got a little bit of information to give you. Uh, Ziggity, the guy I was talking about who he was missing because I thought he was the primary guy for the team. Turns out he's a sub. He showed up. He's watching. So good for him. And he's apparently ta- uh, Tinker's Tar's favorite hero. So that's why they second phased it. They He just had a bad game before and said, give me my favorite hero, my best hero. Probably is what he thinks. Maybe not. And let me just play my game. So... But a Dazzle pickup, I like this a lot. If they're going to run dual lanes, they, these are two supports that can support two dual lanes. Um, two very strong laners. They both bring sustain and just allow you to keep uh, keep alive and not get ganked down. Fantastic two picks by the Dire Straits right now. The This is exactly what I what I would think that they would need to do. Nyx is incredible versus Tinker. Has, offers a lot of potential. And this is the, the core that they're going to focus. And they're not going to care about these supports right now. Dazzle Jug is a good lineup to kind of face a Nyx. But Nyx, if he plays it right, shouldn't die in that lane. They could harass him. But if, you, if you're harassing Nyx, he still has a lot of regen. So you can't really out-harass him with just Dazzle. If you move Trian out of the offlane, that prov- provokes a lot of... That provokes a lot of movement out of the Night Stalker once Night hits. He's able to, to gank mid over and over. So it's it's really aggressive lineup coming up versus a Tinker, and that's what you want. They also work in a variety of ways of stopping him out. You can still be invisible by hitting Carapace inside of a March of the Machine, set it all up from there, and just blow up a Tinker. You also have, like Faf was saying, with the Night Stalker. And both of them work incredibly well with a crystal maiden so very good draft so far on the other side of things lemon snow cones has a lot of heal holy crap that's a lot of heal and AA carry time let's go <laughs> aa offlane or aa carry? AA, aa carry don't offlane it just offlane the mix just run the aa we're, carry like come on a is also good against uh tinker come on not talking for <laughs> dire straits just pick up the aa Farm him up a Midas, go. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously for Dire Straits, I, I hear what you're saying. I thought you were doing, like, a counter thing. Yeah, you could totally pick up AA at that point. I don't know for carry. That'd be interesting. I actually think that it could be interesting to see a Night Stalker carry at this point. I know it's not hasn't been done in a while, and there's, there's no real reason to at this point. Except that if you could get that AA, it would stop up three three of their team's major abilities. So it could be an interesting pool. I don't think that it's necessarily going to happen. They're probably just going to go for some type of explosive damage. I would see like maybe Sven coming out for them, get some type of aggressive ability. Oh, okay. Uh, Offlane Bloodseeker? They're going to run dual lanes, man. I just told you, like, they ran dual lanes before. That was clearly their comfort play. And now they picked, again, uh, dual lanes with better supports, tankier supports, and tankier carries. Um, I don't like the lineup as far as, like, once it goes late, but the lanes, they should be fine. And, you know, if you win your lanes or just do well, like, you just kind of count on the Tinker to make a lot of plays, even if he's countered out. Uh, if you first yeah. phase a hero, you have to be confident. Hey, they can counter pick me. I don't care. I- I'll do my thing. Um, same with Invoker, same with Tinker. So, uh, Dire Straits, so Bloodseeker out. With Bloodseeker there, I'm trying to think of what carries I like against Jug and Bloodseeker, because they're kind of two, they really approach you from different ways. I think a Sven's still fine. Yeah, the Sven might get ruptured a lot, but whatever, that's fine. Like, Sven, Sven's great. Yeah, they still pick the Sven. Like, you're going to get ruptured a ton, it's going to be annoying, but you just kind of... 
you know, hopefully you can get off your stun, kind of run through the damage a little bit, get your couple god strength hits off, and, and then you absorb a lot of attention, and then you got to count on your team to finish up the fight for you. Or at least enable you to uh, do enough if you're the one who's getting ruptured. So, I like the pick. It's true. I actually think that this game would, would would be perfect if Invoker went for a Lincoln Sphere and actually just put it on the spin so that he could just use his ultimate uh, hit BKB and then put the Lincoln Sphere on him and they can't do anything about that. They have they could stop a Jug ultimate or they could stop a Bloodseeker well, It doesn't stop hit. the Jug ultimate. It stops the one hit. Stops the one hit, but they would have to use Jug ultimate to be able to use Bloodseeker's ultimate on top of him, would be my point. There would be no way to block the uh, block the ability to begin with. I mean, yeah, it, it's all about... They don't have a great initiator. Again, I think that's probably the weakest point in both their drafts is that they don't have initiation. Meanwhile, uh, Lemon Snow Cones really has a couple different ways to start the fight. Um, even Invoker Tornado can work, though it's not ideal. But, you know, Sven can initiate well. Night Stalker, Nyx, both can. Even CM can go for the blink like he, uh, Morgan did last game. So, just from the sheer... Uh, the fact that the Tinkers countered out a little bit, and the fact that they don't have an initiation, they really are counting this Bloodseeker snowballing, and this Tinker snowballing. Um, the one thing I do hope we see at some point is a Tinker Ags with Blood uh, blood Rage on him, and he just lasers and kills five people, four people at once. That'd be great. <laughs> I've had it done yeah. to me in pubs, it's infuriating, but it is, it is, if you're going to pick those two heroes, you have to be thinking that at some level, hey, we're going to do this true they do see the smoke coming out so they probably they're paying out that the possibility they need to walk up on top of the high grounds to stop the stop the wards coming out but they actually do a different play they go for a yeah, deeper ward different bottom ward. yeah i like that uh gives them a vision of potentially any rotations on this blood seeker tree lane also enables tree to maybe if it seems going to get the rune or get jungle the tree can become very aggressive because you know where the supports are so you can either go on the carry sven or can go on uh, you know whomever um i actually like tree in an aggro situation against sven uh yeah he's tanky but he really hates just getting that constant harass of tree in the early levels plus uh he's not really scared of the sven punching him a few times especially when you go in stout shield orb of venom it's a very large man. Yeah, he's he's gonna put a lot of pressure out on on this tri lane, which is yeah. which is good to have. Thing is though, is if done correctly, I think that they still have a better level one and have kill potential, and that's why I was surprised by the Bloodseeker. It's because he doesn't really offer anything in the kill lineup that a tree tree does. He's there to smack someone. Just kind of surprise them, get a lot of damage out. That's why I was really thinking of, of the Darkseer and that type of play. Honestly, Darkseer would have been perfect for them before, even at the end right there. It wasn't like something that they had to save. Yeah, it's, they got two good Iron Cell targets. Jug and Tree both love Iron Shell. Right, and they can get a speed boost on a Jug. There's a lot of different play that they could have had there. Though, it should be interesting... It, to say the least, for a blood seeker, there's still a lot of combination there with blood, blood right being able to drop down on top of tree alt and things like that. So, should be a good you game. Know, yeah, it should be a good game. The one thing I'd say, I, I think how you, if you, if I was gonna play this, if you gave me these two drafts, I'd have, I'd just let the jug solo versus a, a Nyx, like count on him to win that lane, and then just have the dazzle down here. Because with dazzle, I think they can go toe to toe with. But this, top, uh, they might actually get a kill. Oh, but herpes does get a stun off and is able to get the jug out. Yeah, doesn't get the spin off if if he's able to get the spin off for that stun and just run him down. Um, this is where that five movement speed loss is pretty big on the jug. Um, meanwhile, mid, uh, you know, Tinker's doing Tinker things, just lasering it up. Super annoying. Uh, but Darrow's doing okay. He's fine. Meanwhile, bot though, this Sven's taking a lot of damage. Look at this. Look at his HP. They're trying to trace this tree down, but. They don't have vision right now. And do they put down a sentry? Yeah, they put down a sentry. He walked back into the sentry, and they do get the first blood. Sheepy goes down. I thought he was just going to hang out back. Oh, now Bloodseeker's in trouble. Avoid. Uh, yep, Bloodseeker's going to... It's going to be a double kill. Ooh, nice body blocks made by yep. vision there. 
And they give it to the Sven. Uh, not a double kill for the Night Stalker. He chose to give that to the Sven for sure. Vision was body blocking. Uh, CM does go down and trade for that. Uh, yeah, it looks like a creep hitter. Yeah. It was it was a creep, but it was also that the ticking from Dazzle's slow, so yeah. she was she was dying of being slowed up by that. So it wasn't really a misposition play. It was just yeah. Uh, that's well, you, the cost you, got of yeah you, get, you got two kills. Yeah, you get you two kills in the CM. Like sometimes you're gonna die at that for that. That's fine. Um, but this they have rotated down the Dazzle, and I like this. Like. If you're gonna go aggro with this, just let, count on the jug to handle herps, herpes. There's no reason that this jug shouldn't be able to handle a Nyx in a 1v1. Um, but, you know, it just comes down to player skill. Meanwhile, mid, uh, Tinker is going the March build. Um, not going for the laser rocket. He is just going to make sure he gets his items up and keeps the invoker shoved under tower. Uh, they're trying to go on this... Uh, this Bloodseeker? Oh, he's, Blood Rage is about to wear off. He's still in level 2, level 1 though. Okay, now he's level 2. Now he has that Thirst. Now, he, look at how scary he is, just because of the extra move speed and damage, it, just from move, that. Moving the Dazzle down here definitely helped, because they could have just chain fed off of him. Oh my goodness, there's no Stout Shield on this Blood. That, man, he might have lived with the Stout, honestly. Oh, that's possible. There's also the availability of alt coming out from invoker so uh the thing is though the good thing about oh, this combination this, yeah oh there goes down the night stalker and this is just the power of thirst look at this they just get low because of the heal tree gets hit but tree's a tanky boy and just walks it off yeah i was i was gonna say that that's kind of the problem of of this lineup is that you can you can run away with bloodseeker because you can have Tree just smashing you down. You can have a lot of potential. So I didn't even think of that, and it's actually a really smart move, is you have a tanky guy just smacking people, getting you low, and that actually lets you ex escape because of it. So it's, yeah. a, it's an interesting style uh, of this draft. Acer on the Tinker. Is he going to try to do it? No. He's maxing March, so he doesn't have the nuke potential to burst down an Invoker. But he can, again, just keep him under tower forever. And he's going to pick up an Arcane Rune. Oh, he doesn't get that last hit, though. That's always... Uh, Meanwhile, up top, though, um, the Nyx is doing pretty well. Uh, farming... Oh, they've rotated. Voiceless Fate has had enough of this Bloodseeker tri-lane, and they've swapped lanes. But, honestly, I think this is fine, too, again, for the Jug. Like, Jug will do quite well against the Sven in a 1v1. Um, he, ha he can always dodge his stun out. He has a heal ward. He has his crit. And... Frankly, spin is just a higher potential uh, skill as far as damage goes. Uh, but meanwhile, yeah. down bot, they do get a kill on the treant. Looks like uh, it was a sunstrike contributed in. No, sunstrike was a bar was barely a miss, but the the crystal maiden was able to get a quick frostbite as he was going up the staircase, and it just set up an easy nix assassin stun. So, yeah, it's a good play just by enough. them. Night Stalker, it's night time. He had not been doing anything just as yet. Instead, he's going to set up to go on this Tinker, but he's only level 2. Makes it a little trickier. There's no silence, so there's always the laser counterplay, and he has this Arcane Rune. Um, he's got a Soaring Up, but no boots yet, so he should be dead here. Yep. Yeah, he's the, dead. the Void comes out, and they have multiple people to yep. attack here. Just he's body got body block. blocks, but, oh, but he's going to actually Night die Stalker's for Night Stalker's going to go down. Yeah, I don't think they're going to get this kill, not unless he hits the Sun Strike. He doesn't have enough mana for it. And Tinker has his Shrine up. He can just Shrine up now, if he so chooses. And that's... Man, three points of March is no joke top. at all. Top. Oh, top. Sven almost goes down. And even if he doesn't, this makes Bloodseeker so scary right now. Look at him. Speedy Gonzales. He actually put two points in blood right before getting more thirst. A little unusual. Well, I guess it's actually pretty normal, so you can always have it to farm. Last hit and farm. Uh, so not the biggest thing, but the Sven's already forced out, and this is kind of the problem with the the Sven sometimes. It's something you can be pressured in lane, and if you're not ahead as a Sven, you just feel so bad. They need to be careful. Oh! Sven with the Jug wastes his spin. That's a big problem. He now doesn't have enough mana for it. And this Night Stalker is just trying to run down the Dazzle. But look at the Tinker mid lane. He's just crushing Direwolf. This Max March build, I can just feel Direwolf tilting. Because he's just shoving him under tower, constantly lasering him. And yeah, he's got Quas to heal up through it. But it still means it makes it harder to last hit. Uh, 
compared to what you're used to. Yeah, he, he that is true, and it's not really going to be a. I'm going to get the. I'm going to get a max tink, tinker build. I'm not going to get the most out of this lane. I mean, he's going to get a lot because he is. He does have March of the Machines max, and he's able to get a few of these last hits over on top of Dire Wolf. But I mean, the really versus is they're getting total rune control. This this tinker I think's gotten every single rune because he's just shoved the lane so hard. And the supports haven't been in a position to contest the runes. Oh, and on bot, Sven is TPing back down. Uh, looks like he made the call to rotate back down bottom. I'm a little confused at what's going on here. The Night Stalker is going on mid, but yeah, nothing's going to happen. He realized that with the support there up top, there w it was more of a problem. And then They're trying the to go on this. Oh, this Crystal Maiden might be dead. Yeah. Oh, the body block. Oh, nice stun by Voiceless Fade. Might be able to save the CM. It is. And Night Soccer TP's down, but still, they've shoved the CM out of lane. She doesn't have Tranquil. She needs to go home immediately. She is so low and just makes Bloodseeker so strong right now. Look at this 49 damage. Yeah, he's just going after this. Oh, Night Stalker oh, just gets over the trees in time to escape. Tinker gets another rune. This one a DD. Tinker's going to be on for a, with nearly doubling up the invokers, well on pace to get a very fast boot to travel, especially considering that he went soul ring first. Yeah, it's it, it was he didn't go too greedy with it. He's been doing very well in lane, and this shows that they should probably have banned out Tinker. He, I, I believe this the who was the the Ziggity. gentleman. He's the sub Ziggity. for Lemon Snow Cone, so. Yeah, this is the whole thing. This is why you see a lot in AD2. You'll see unconventional bans, because, man, if you if you got somebody's best hero, like, when Storm was strong, and the old devils, like, Kairi just loves Storm, and Storm was a top-tier hero, they could, they just first phase it, because, yeah, they shut him down, but he's, you're so comfortable in the hero, you're fine dealing with these matchups. And the other thing is, is that they tried to do the right thing and gank with the Night Stalker, but they didn't really pull it off, and because they didn't pull it off, the other lanes aren't going as well as you'd expect from the draft, and the Tinker is still doing great. Like, he fed a kill to the Tinker, um, trying to make the right rotation, but it just didn't work out. Nyx had yeah, to TP out top? No, Nyx TP'd mid, has his level 6, has decided to murder the Tinker, but there's a sentry down, and Tinker sees that. He was just going to get a rune, because, uh, you know, he was low on mana and pushed the wave in, and now he knows the Nyx is about, so he should be able to play cautiously. And this Nyx ult is probably not going to accomplish much. And down bot, Bloodseeker comes out, gets a kill on the Sven. Looks like he didn't even rupture for this. He's only level 5, and they're going to get another kill. Yep, it's dead there. There's a counter kills on the Treant and the uh, Dazzle with the Sunstrike and the Nyx rotation over, but that's fine. You killed uh, the Sven, and the Bloodseeker got two kills, and he's now level 6, so rupture's online. Meanwhile, Tinker will have his Boots of Travel and about 300 gold, and he's going to easily get that. And Voiceless he's... again, TP's top. He just can't find a home. He's against a level 8 Jug right now. If Jug had actually just gone Phase Boots instead of this Brown Boots farming item, he just kills this this Sven right there. He could have just spun on him with with Phase and then just ulted him this, uh, once that was done. And that Sven actually just dies. To, to Jug's credit, though, at this point, there's been a lot of lane swapping, so he's realizes that he could get away with a lot and didn't really need oh, down depend bot. on that. Tree gets caught out by, uh, looks like a Nyx. Yeah, look, oh, no, Nyx gets ruptured, but still has his ult up, and is just going to sit there. Yeah, they were able to, to jump on top of him. They had they had a lot of, they have a lot of lockdown between the two of them, just, you know, coming out from the trees. He wasn't next to it. That wasn't being the classic tree sight thing that he always does, just sitting next to trees, getting sight for your offlaner. He was actually trying to be around him and farm a little bit. They're actually trying to go in on bottom at this point. With oh, but Jukes out the Sunstrike. I guess he, well, since the Shrine wasn't up, he just moved to safety of his tower. But the Boots of Travel are done on Tinker. He has an 11 minutes of Boots of Travel and uh, Soul Ring. This is going to be a big problem if he starts accelerating. Not only that, like, the availability of him to keep people low and allow Bloodseeker just to run ham is going to be pretty high. And also just keep the pressure on the lanes, so... And, you know, like I said, I don't like these greedy builds, but if Aegis Warren's able to get up this Maelstrom, which he has now, like, that's just going to accelerate his farm hugely. And then the greed will pay off. 
And then you have three farm cores to two. Maybe not even two, because Sven is not doing well. Let's switch over to net worth. And yeah, Sven is actually below his Nyx right now with all these lane swaps and deaths he's had. He's trying to eke out some jungle farm, but it's just slow going. There's not a lot that you can do at this point as a Sven here. You have to. First kind of Tinker play up trials. top. He comes up top. Omni Slash is committed and gets off the air. The Nyx goes in, but there's an instant tree uh, armor to heal up the Jug. The Vendetta damage does a little bit, but he's just healed up instantly by a salve he had saved. And this Tinker's just pushing the Lave with. He's got max rockets and max march. Hasn't valued the laser, but that just means his spam harass potential to enable this Bloodseeker is huge. Um, his, his spam harass is, is incredibly strong at this point. Hey, he's able to do a lot just by getting out, out this uh, double everyone. stack with the illusions and just farming it up. Yeah, there are 2k up, and it's only going to keep getting worse. The one bright side here is Direwolf is doing pretty well on the Invoker. He's only a you know he's a thousand below the Tinker, but he does have his Midas up, and uh, is going to be able to take this mid tower. And losing this mid tower is a big deal for the Tinker. It's much harder for him to pressure uh, your tower if he has to TP to Shrine, just naturally. So. But Tinker is just coming in really deep. Nyx comes in and gets a nice stun on him, but Jug's there to back him up. And they get a wards down, but they're just going to keep the pressure on. Meanwhile, Bot, the safe lane has just been abandoned. Uh, nobody wants to go near this Bloodseeker. Tinker is able to keep people pretty low, which gives Bloodseeker a lot of potential to gain gain that thirst ability. He's been able to farm oh, they quite go in a bit on the Jug. Does he get the spin off? No, he doesn't. The stun is enough, and they get a nice, easy pick on the Jug, who, again, he went for this greedy build, has no stats, isn't going for, like, a wand, a quill, a phase, he's going straight to Fusil, so, um, you know, it's just, he gives these greedy builds, and he's getting punished for them, and it's just bad, so, not much I'll say about it. Uh, and it looks like the uh, Bloodseeker's not doing that, has his phase up, has his Orb of Venom, still no stout shield, but at this point in the game, you kind of don't, it's not the biggest of deals, and it's just going straight for his S and Y. Uh, looks like they want to make a kill happen here on the Sven, with the Sven, but the tree scouts it out, and he's just going to back up. And with Rupture and the Tinker, they do always have the turn capability, if uh, Morgan Free Farm comes out too far. Yeah, Morgan... Morgan is not able to get a, a lot done on the map. Actually, really, Vision's not able to get a lot done on the map at this point. He's gone a 3-0-2 build at this point on Night Stalker. Uh, not able to get up the Crippling Fear. Kind of lessens a lot of the effectiveness of what the hero is able to oh, do. Oh, they found the CM in the jungle. The heal bomb, and yep, there's the kill. Sunstrike's going to miss. They're going to heal up. Bloodseeker's in here. They're going to rupture him up. He's going to have to run, but he's just going to tick. Oh, nope. Do they activate the shrine? No, the dazzle heal saves the bloodseeker. There's no. Oh, the tornado! Oh, it misses oh, by the smallest close. of margins. And Tinker, meanwhile, is just TP bot, and Sven gets a stun off on him. But laser's a good ability, and voiceless fate has to run. Yeah, you gotta get away from those march. Oh no, he runs back into the machines. And Bloodseeker, oh no, is the rocket going to finish him off? Yes, it is. He ran back into the March Machines, but Tinker's going to pay for it for his life. So honestly, given that the Sven has near support farm levels, that's a trade you'll take every time, especially when an Invoker can get the Sunstrike kill. And this Nyx has already done so much work, and they're going to catch out the Dazzle. So big, two big kills for the uh, Dire Straits. Meanwhile... This is coming. This is going to come down to a battle in the mid, for sure. Th yeah. There's a lot of... Tree's going to get caught out himself. He's going to get run down by this Night Stark. Oh, and another Sunstrike kill. Mega kill streak for Direwolf with a triple kill. Based two two Sunstrikes and this little Dazzle. Herpaderp, however, is uh, going to die here pretty easily. And a nice Tornado, but no mana to set up. And this is the problem with Invoker until he has Ags. Uh, and quite a few levels. He just doesn't have the mana to sustain all the spells he can cast uh, until he has those levels and the Ags, really, for the mana pool. Uh, Jug does take top tower out of this, and Invoke, and the Tinker is still going very well, but that little kill spree has vaulted the Invoker above him. And Tinker's blink is coming online, though, and once he has that, uh, his ability to aggressively impact the game is going to go up. I think the main thing they need is, they need sentries to set up for whoever they plan on fighting and just lay them down so they can counter out this Nyx. Like, they keep dying to Nyx coming in, even after they've won fights, like, Nyx picks somebody off um, just by walking in and setting up for that Sunstrike. 
Yeah, the, Nyx is about to get another kill on Dazzle. Misses the stun, though, and he may be a return kill at this point. Get out, getting out the slow down at bottom. The tree is going to try to hunt him down, but he's going to get out just just fine. And it's once once again, it's committed on Nyx. They know that he's not able to get in a kill, so they're basically going to push this tower pretty freely. They know that Sven really can't contest at this point. He has to go for farm. And oh, they get the rupture onto the Nyx. He pops out his... Spike Carapace, but that's not enough. He gets silenced out by the blood right, and he's just dead. They popped the Nice Sucker all to get uh, there, and they were gonna TP down. I think the Invoker, uh, no, it was because the Sven started to TP, but he canceled it because he would have just been food, and they're just gonna lose this tower. And honestly, I think they just at this point need to farm up, let Sven get some modicum of items, and just your Invoker's just farming well. Just protect the Invoker, get the Sven what he can, and, and just try to fight around like. Sven's almost got his Mask of Madness up, which is quite late, but it's something. And then once he gets his Blink up, your Invoker should also have his Ags. And Ags, maybe Ags travels. And once you have that combined together, I think you can try to take fight. Oh, and they caught out Vision. Tigger's going to come in, and this is just an easy kill. And now the push. This push is going to get so real. And this is and this, this push is so scary. Even with Jug maxing crit, he still they have still have so much heal between the Dazzle and Tree that they can sustain these pushes and easily just mow down towers. Oh, they get the Rupture off onto the Invoker now. They're going to get the Root on on him? Do they have Vision? They get a Sentry down from the Dazzle now. Now he's in trouble. They have the Root. He does they have Tornado. Oh, oh, he doesn't use it. And they lose Close. the tower and the invoker. Um, and you're right, this all comes down to the mid laners. Like, can the invoker stall out the game long enough for Sven to get some items? Or, and the other hero I'd say is Nyx. Like, Nyx can also make things happen with Vendetta plays. He's got a Midas as well, so he's going to keep scaling. Um, I really like that pickup in this circumstance um, because you know your Sven's behind. You have to, you have to do something. He he needs to kind of have some pressure on the map, though. It is nice to get that that pickup. He really needs to be able to blow up Tinker, though. He needs to punish the the true hero in this game. Like, yes, Jug's going to get farmed. Yes, Bloodseeker's going to get farmed. And there's not really much you're going to be able to do about it. But you can at least stop the potential of the split, push, split pushing monster yeah, if, that is Tinker. If you notice, he did go the max mana burn to try to do just that. Um, you know, he wasn't able to go Dagon, but he used these early levels he got. And he's got a big nuke to use against Tinker. And right there, he cancels the TP, uses it. Got a lot of damage down, but the Sun Strike's a little miscoordinated. If the Sun Strike had come out right on time, I think they get that kill, but instead he's gonna pay for it. And that's just the downside of you try to make the right play, but you communicate it slightly wrong and you get punished for it. Um, and Direwolf had been hitting Sun Strike after Sun Strike, so you know, just didn't work out that time. But I like the play from Herpes. If you get a chance to kill that tanker, you gotta take it. Yeah, and there's no TP, so if a voiceless fade up top is gonna get out just fine. You know what? I'd Tinker's like to yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, I'd kind of like to see on this Tinker. I'd like to see a Yules. I think this is a pretty good Yules game for him, um, and it would prevent that from happening. Yules, Yules would be fine. There's also some other items that could actually work pretty decently. Uh, if you can maybe get, maybe even like a BKB this game, Yules is probably better in this just, in this situation. Yeah, I just like Yules because it has the double. So it lets you cancel CM ult. It lets you. If you get silenced up, it lets you buy some time and counter the silence. Um, oh, and he's just able to get out. Vision wasn't able to get in range for the void before his flying vision went up. So, yep. On the DD now on this uh, Juggernaut. The Juggernaut's approaching the point where he has his defusal up too. Sven is gaining ground on him just because uh, he has been dying. And honestly, like, he, oh, he does have his phase boots now. That's big. So. Tinker is Ooh. just spamming up the waves. They might be able to get him with the Nyx. They get the Nyx stun, Kerpa stun him. He hits a stun, but the Sun Strike gets sidestepped, and there's a Dazzle here. He should be able to grave him right now. There's the grave. I don't know if Tinker's going to get away from this. I think they're still going to kill him. No, the Heal Ward! Oh, the uh, Sonic Wave is just able to catch him, but the Bloodseeker's coming in along with the Jug to clean it up. The Omni Slash doesn't quite work out the West, but it does manage to pick off the Sven. Sven comes in with the Mask of Madness. Doesn't... Get his ult. Looks like he used his ult to farm, so Bloodseeker's able to clean it up, and all that's left is the Invoker, who cancels out his uh, Ghost Walk because he knows the Bloodseeker has vision on him, and I think they're just going to be able to run him down. 
Yeah. Oh no, Ice Wolf! Oh, why'd he turn? He, he turned! It. Oh no! Dire Wolf, why? Oh, they do end up killing the Jug out of that with the Sven's potential. And the Invoker was able to clean up the Tinker in the end off that. Great. Hello. And they're going to come right back in. Hey. Oh, hey. Yeah, just... I computer crashed right as that Invoker Tornado came in. Or not oh, a computer, okay. my connection crashed. I had to reboot my router. Oh, what has happened? The Jug, I was actually actually in the middle of a team fight right now. We got Jug, is able to go down. He commits the Omni Knight, but they're able to come come back out of it. We have Treant in the back and Vision being able to be taken out by the Tinker, doing a lot of damage. Oh, wow, that Ag Scepter's really come in handy. Is able to keep the keep voiceless fade from able to be, being hit. Laser came out. He's going to be able to get another laser out again. Gets gets a double double uh, double oh rocket goodness. and takes out four people there. So a good that was trade a five for two, and then it turned into a four for three just because Tinker came in and lasered everybody. Yeah, it was it was looking real bad for a second there for Lemon Straits, but really Tinker is just carrying this on his back and committing a lot in this game. So, uh, hats off to him at, at this point. It's been well played after well played match. So, he's it's not over yet though. It's not over yet. And is your stream back up now? Uh, it will be once the delay is off. Okay. It's, I it's just still... uh, I'll I'll let you talk now. I was just trying to yep. finish it in for the people who are watching in. Game. Yep, they'll be yeah they'll be seeing it soon. It will, it will be back up. Um, so. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. My connection just went down. Reboot of a router and my modem, and I was back. So, that unfortunately, happens sometimes. Uh, meanwhile, oh, they catch the Tinker out with a tornado and a sun strike, but it doesn't do enough. He's quite tanky now because he does have that axe completed and an Aether lens, so he does so much damage. And an axe Tinker actually has a fair amount of stats. He's going straight hex next. I can't argue with that. With how aggressive he's been able to blink into these fights, being able to blink hex somebody. Um, goes from there. Let's see if streams back up. It should be live now, and uh, I think it's is it up? Hopefully it's up. Why don't you just keep? Okay, it's back up. It's back up. So okay. we're good. So right. sorry again about that. Uh, my internet connection just went down, and the seasons happen. Uh, Tinker comes in. Judd's completed up the Yasha. Still doesn't have any HP items, and he wants the damage talent as well. So. Not a fan of that overall. A little squishy boy, but Sven doesn't have his BKB yet. That's the next big thing. Once he has BKB, that gives them a window to win these fights. But because he didn't have that, uh, Tinker was able to just come in and dominate him with laser. So and they have working. they have no they had nothing to stop him out. Yeah, uh, I don't see the stream right now um, at all. Uh, not really sure. Uh, the the, the Tinker able to really have a lot of pressure at this point. I would actually like to see exactly what he's doing right now. He's going through that sheep to to stop through even through BKBs at this point. And if he can get up that sheep before Sven gets up his BKB, which is actually logically possible the way that he's been farming at this point, his net worth is off the charts right now. As you can see, there's a lot of potential there. On what he's on what he's able to get done compared to this Sven, and there's was a little bit of a play there. They're able to pick off. Oh, they the have CM, vision with the Sven. They actually defuse him out. He's silenced right now. They get an Omni. Oh, but it bounces to the creeps, and he isn't able to get in. Jug gets caught by uh, the disarm, but the meatball is just a little bit off the mark, and they aren't able to clean them up from there able to heal up with all of their heals. Honestly, I, I, I almost feel like this game, yes, it's been uh, a tinker problem, but they also have just so much heals to keep him alive and keep everything else alive. Really, the AA carry could have actually worked this game just because it has been insane how much their life just jumps back up when they should be taking full damage. Bloodseeker has no real defensive item. He's able to just exist because they have this healing ward's doing so much for them. Dazzle, all of his work, and Treant's armor. Just no, no real way to stop any of these guys. There's no ticking damage on the Treant armor. There's no calling uh, calling blade for the Dazzle. 
it's just been it's a well-formed draft i was actually very i'm very surprised that it turned out this well for them at by the end not that they drafted not that they draft badly but it was just it works way better than i anticipated yep um yeah it did the the Knicks is able to have a blink now, so maybe they might be able to start something there. Getting a quick blink in on the on the Tinker uh, can really set up a uh, fight really well. Tinker's getting really close to his ultimate orb item. He's not going to have buyback, but he looks like he's probably just going to try to go for I have more money than you, I'm going to win the game type, type plays here. Especially with Invoker not having anywhere near his BKB and having the highest farm <clears throat> for the Radiant side. They have, yeah. We have Sven also. He is pretty close to BKB at this point, though. So they actually have a lot to turn. They do, but the thing is, is that, um, okay, and the uh, .ptv is rehosting us. Thanks again, Cyphus. Uh, I messaged him about that, and he was able to get it rehosted. So hopefully everyone will find their way back. But yeah, the main thing, I think, is that with Tinker, their lanes are so far pushed in, like, even if he dies without buyback, you don't necessarily need buyback in this situation just because they're so pushed into their base how are they going to do this uh they do have that healing ward a little too aggressively forward he was able to keep that back micro wise nor do they have a sentry so oh jug is gonna get off the omni right as invoker tries to combo and it just blows up the nyx and the cm they get a rupture onto the invoker invoker's just gonna get run down there's nothing he can do and he is dead there's no buyback on any of these heroes it's now a 5v3 and i think this is just gonna be a gg call right now most definitely. The, that was... It's over. The Sven uses ultimate. He doesn't have his ultimate for this fight anymore if he tries to go in. Really, I would have just committed at that point. You get, you used your ultimate. You have Mask of Madness. You could just BKB Mask of Madness, jump in, try to 1v4 them at that point. Because that's the only way you're going to come out of this alive. You know, because now he, he, might, he might be deciding to... Oh, no. He just walks in and gets hexed. And we've got to pause out. Uh, I, I think that's it. Uh, now that he's hexed, he doesn't have buyback. He bought out for the BKB and the blink. And I can't blame him for that. Oh! A Windows update on Sven? Oh. That explains why he just walked in like that. I think this is just a GG, though. Yeah. He gets off his BKB, but the physical damage is gonna be too much. Yeah, they're just gonna punch him down. And that's fun. like it's unfortunate Sven had some computer issues there, but I think this is just going to be GG no matter what. So I don't think it really changed the uh, you know what's going on with this game. So yeah, but now we've got an even series, and if Tinker isn't banned first phase every game for the rest of the series by the Dire Straits, I'd be shocked. Like they just got dominated by it, and you just don't want that happen to yourself again. Yeah, me too. If they do let it through, they should definitely pick up Clockwork. That is like the hero to stop him out. He has a lot of potential in in the match, especially for how much they value a CM. There's a lot of a lot of potential there. And looking at their at their play, really, I gotta say that like you can lane swap, but commit to your lane swap. If it's going bad or going a little bad in both situ in both situations, rotate the supports out of there because they rotated the carry out twice. Then they didn't really rotate the supports on Dire Straits. That's what was a little confusing. So. Kind of a thing, a lesson to learn from this kind of pulling back is don't don't leave your carry alone if you think that it's going to be the problem. He, the Knicks could have gone bottom and been been fine by himself if they wanted to rotate it out. And then the other enemy team would have rotated. It would have forced them to have some type of lull in their farm. So Very important to do. Yeah, I, I think that in the end... Uh, he didn't commit to the lane swap, went up there with the jug, and discovered he couldn't quite handle it. Um, but, you know, it was just a better game plan. And it, it, I think once the jug made the call, or somebody made the call on their team to just move the Dazzle down bot and just let count on the jug to handle the Nyx, uh, that tri lane got so scary, and they just uh, they just lost that out. And that's where the Crystal Maiden and the Night Stalker ended up being a little greedy. Like, they just weren't able to do much in lane to help that Sven who got pressured. But, you know, in the end, I think they could have played it better in lane and not gotten so far behind and maybe salvaged it a little better. But, you know, they didn't get those key kills on the Tinker. 
um, you know, that happens. So, yeah, uh, that's really all I have to say for that game. That was a, it was a nice comeback by Lemon Snow Cone, going back to kind of show the strength of, uh, their abilities of their players. So, I'm interested to see what they're going to do next, now that they won't have the Tinker, uh, pocket pick, because I, I just can't imagine they wouldn't ban that out. I would honestly versus the these guys on the lemon uh, lemon they really seem to like these duo lanes and they're they seem to be pretty practiced at it they're trying to have good setup even though I didn't like how the shadow shaman was working and it didn't work at all after a while in the first like minute or I would say four minutes of the game they still played it pretty well they had a lot of uh, aggression up on top of them and really forced them to get some picks that they really shouldn't have been able to get with that combination so it, if, if I'm going up against a team like that I would try to like pick against that and have a really strong kill tri lane so that I know that I can just farm off of the two heroes and let my offlaner deal with it or let my offlaner pick an offlaner that can work really well 1v2 because there's plenty of those out there like you were saying Baff, uh, uh, what was it? Pitlord. Pitlord is incredible versus two people. So, I, w I would have loved to have seen that. There's a lot of potential that they could have versus this team. And I also think that Lemon Snow Cones has found a really good way to stop Dire Straits. Dire Straits really value the Invoker. Alright, we're going to guarantee that we're going to pick up a strong mid that can work very well versus Invoker. That you're gonna farm. We're gonna out farm you and out win that lane. So, very good, good play by both of them of reading each other's strategy. And I can't wait for round three. Yeah, me either. Uh, I'm just checking to see if the lobby's up. It is up. I'm gonna hop in the lobby, then go grab myself another energy drink. <laughs>